Hey, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to go over a quick print head cleaning outside of the printer for the uh, DTG machines that I have. This is a head out of a Epson 3880. This is a spare print head that I have. So I'm going to use this as an example and the uh, three ways that you can help get a clog out of it. Now what I have prepared here, I have a bucket here with some water in it. I have some cleaner that's a little bit warmed up. I have my syringe with my hose attachment. I have a syringe with a multi-hose attachment. And then uh, I have my print head. This is all I really need for, for doing this. Now, one thing that is very crucial to doing any of these methods is when it's out of the printer, is that you make sure this stays dry. You really don't want to get any, any liquid outside of on your, your nozzle jets here. And on the bottom, everything else needs to stay dry. If you do get it wet, it's not the end of the world. You do need to get some compressed air and blow it out. Make sure it stays dry before you plug it back in. You're going to have yourself some real problems. It does not want to be wet. So most of the time, I'll just tape this up, much like I have on this demo unit here, taped up just to try to help keep it dry. So first thing that you can do, get you a bucket or some Tupperware, something small, Put about this much water in it, take your print head, set it inside the bucket, let it soak, like so. You're going to see ink start to form in the bucket because all of the print head ink that's in it is going to start coming out of it, which is what we want. We want to break it down. Now, second to doing that, leave it sitting there for a little while, 30 minutes or so. It's good, 10 minutes. This depends on how bad your print head is. Second thing you can do is called a reverse flush. Now this, I will emphasize, is risky business, as I put it. What's inside of here um, is pressure sensitive. It does not like or need a lot of pressure. Um, now keep in mind, when, you're, when your printer's printing, it's forcing ink down through these nozzles, right? It's not pulling it the other way. So it wants to go this way, straight through it. So you sucking it up from the bottom, it's gonna kinda piss it off. So what I would do, is warm up, warm up your uh, cleaning solution if you're using a head cl clog cleaner or something of that nature. Attach your hose to it, put it inside your fluid, like so, and it can just sit on the bottom there. Let me reposition this a little bit so we can make sure we can see down inside here. And what you're gonna do is apply slight pressure on the pole, very little. Very little. Let's see if we can zoom in and see the, the hose here for what we have happening. Try to get a better shot of this. Give me one second. Let me adjust this. All right. So as we pull, you'll see a little bit of air come up, a little bit of bubbles. And what we're looking for is kind of just a little bit of ink or, you know, sometimes you might have a little schmegma come up in there. Just whatever's in the head. And then what I'll do is I'll disconnect it. And I'll take this and we'll squirt this out. As you can see, I had some little bit of white ink come out of that. So that's one way. Now, I emphasize this a lot. You cannot put a lot of pressure through it. If you're not getting the result, it's okay. Just soak it. Don't force it. If you have to force it, you're going to damage it. So that would be a reverse head flush. So, so far, we've got soaking it in a, in a cleaning solution. It could be distilled water, put some alcohol in it, like rubbing alcohol, Use one of your head cleaners, warm it up. I've got Simple Green all-purpose cleaner. These are water-based inks, so water-based cleaners will dissolve the ink. Now, third way we can do it is a waterfall. Now, to do a waterfall, we need a syringe still with the uh, hose attachment. There's also ones that have multiple hoses if you wanted to flush multiple heads at one time. I usually just use the, the single. What we're going to do is suck up some of our cleaning solution. In our syringe, we're going to take our print head, attach, I'm just going to put it on the yellow here, attach our hose to it, like so. I usually do this in my bathroom over the sink, make a big old mess. We're going to do it in this bucket, and we're going to lightly press through this print head this cleaning solution, right? And you can see it kind of dribbles out, dribbles out. What we don't want to do is force it. Just a little bit of pressure. It's a little bit of pressure. And what we'll see when we have a good clean nozzle 
we'll see the um, it looks like a little waterfall shooting out in a, in, a, in a stream. We don't want little drops. We want a good flow of ink to come out like so. It's kind of still spitting a little bit. And we're going to repeat this process until we have a clean flow of liquid coming out of each of them. So you'd want to take it and move it over to the next one, so on and so forth. The colors usually flush out pretty easy. I'm trying to see if we can get a good shot of that. And so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to reposition our camera angle for you so we can see it. All right, let me suck up a little more liquid here. Hopefully we get a good shot of uh, what it looks like as it's shooting out the bottom. Move my hand out the way. And this is what we're, we're looking for here. There's a nice waterfall out the bottom of the print head, like so. This is what formulates your designs when you print stuff comes out the bottom. So, <clears throat> this process, we will not emphasize this enough, is dangerous. You may have a print head that is getting like a 70% nozzle check and you want it to be 100. You can definitely take this from 100 to zero very quickly. So, if you're not getting it out, you can do a slight reverse head flush Pull a little bit through, push it a little bit out. Pull it through, push it out. Soak it. These don't hold much ink in them. But also, if you notice on the bottom, you know, the lines for it, the print nozzles, they're uh, really, really tiny. So a little speck of stuff inside that print head is going to shut you down as far as printing goes. We want to have good nozzle checks. We want to keep them clean. And usually this is generally just a problem with whites. Not so much the colors, but I do tend to flush all of my colors when I do this. So I just make sure that they're all clean. And then when you put the print head back into your machine, know that there is no ink inside of it. You have flushed it all out. You have brand cleaner through it. There should be nothing in it, which means when you do a nozzle check, guess what? There's no ink in your print head. So your nozzle check is still going to look like crap. So what you need to do is run a couple head cleaning cycles. Um, if you have like one of the adjustment programs, you can do an initial ink charge. Um, if you're running a free jet, definitely cycle your pump. Now, this is not a recommended way of cleaning it. They would prefer that you just run head cleans or, you know, just soak your print head overnight. Um, I realize being in this business that you don't always have overnight. Sometimes you've got something to print. You've got orders to go. You can't wait around for your print head to finish soaking to hopefully do better. So this is a, um, an alternative to that, but I cannot emphasize this enough. These are fragile. If you get water on here and you do not clean it off, blow it out, make sure it is dry. When you plug it back in, this could very well screw your entire printer. You might need a ribbon cable. You might need a main board. You're gonna need a new print head. Um, it does not like moisture. And when you put this cable back in, do so gently. You know, they it's easy to just try to manhandle it in there and end up with a busted cable. Um, and a busted cable will have little chips off the end of it, and then you're replacing the cable. Um, so, I hope this helps you out, and I implore you to use caution whenever forcing a liquid through that head, for sure. I'm gonna show you one more item that I have here that I've used. Um, that I've gotten some success with that is inexpensive way to clean some of your tools. So give me one second. I'm going to go grab it. All right. Now, before you give me any BS about what this thing looks like, I have had this for many years and I have used to use this item to clean airbrush guns um, and, you know, paint spray tips and stuff like that. But right here is a miniature ultrasonic cleaner. You can buy these uh, Harbor Freight, you can buy them on Amazon, you can buy them pretty, a pretty good amount of places to sell them now, actually. But when I bought this, this was uh, the Hotness, and I have a large one out there for cleaning other parts and stuff as well. And what this does is this is meant to clean 
the surface and insides of different things that you put in it using ultrasonic waves, kind of vibrates, makes little micro bubbles in the water, breaks down grease, grime, dirt, stuff like that. So what I have done is I've used this one. Now the inside, this has a little bit of ink left in it, but it's pretty clean. The outside, not so much, but put a little bit of cleaner, enough to where you can just soak the bottom of your print head and the bottom of it and run it. One thing that I thought was pretty interesting is when I did so, I'm going to put this down a second. I got ink coming out of the top of here, which means it's forcing it out. Now, there is no push-pull action happening. This is all just through sound waves, basically. Um, but I did get good results with that. Um, also, if you have other little things that you need to clean, I mean, these are jewelry cleaners, basically kind of what you jewelry store uses to clean jewelry, too. Um, they do work great for that. So I'm going to put a link in this video in the description um, where you can grab yourself a small ultrasonic cleaner. They are super handy to have, especially if you're going to take that print head out and clean it. So if there's anything else you'd like to know about the cleaning and maintenance of this item or the print heads or anything else in the printer that I have come across, I would be more than happy to help you out with that. Um, in the meantime, leave me a comment. Let me know any questions you might have about cleaning them or disassembly or reassembly or anything else of that nature. Um, one thing that will help you is recording yourself, taking apart your printer if you're not comfortable with it, take photos of where everything goes, how it plugs in, take a video of, of things that you can look back over. This has helped me out tremendously, especially taking apart ones that don't really have much uh, user information on or technical information. Um, such as my, my Air Ren here, T800. It's not a whole lot of uh, help when it comes to what's inside that thing. But through trial and error, I have learned a lot about it. So I hope this helped you. Leave me a like. Give me a subscribe. We'll catch you next time.